Hey YouTube, it's IC and welcome to the 113th episode of Best Tech and Phone Rumors. All right, now, first of all, before we begin and actually get into the news of this episode, I just wanted to say that the winner of the fifth generation iPod Touch giveaway has not contacted me back. And as I mentioned in the previous episode, if they hadn't contacted me by now, I'd reopen the giveaway. So that's exactly what I'm doing just for this weekend only, and I will select a new winner after this weekend. So again, to enter the new fifth generation iPod Touch giveaway, all you have to do is go to any of my videos, rate them up, and leave a comment down below in the comment section with the key phrase iPod Touch 5. G ICU and you'll be automatically entered to win. All right, and as of now, the iPad mini giveaway is still going on and it's very similar to the fifth generation iPod touch giveaway. Again, all you have to do is go to any of my videos, rate them up and leave a comment down below in the comment section with the key phrase iPad mini giveaway and you'll be automatically entered to win. All right, now to start off, I just wanted to talk about the jailbreak news for this episode. And I also kind of just wanted to give you guys a summary of the untethered jailbreak status for iOS 6 and 6.0.1 because I could get a countless number of questions pertaining to the jailbreak for newer devices as well as just the untethered jailbreak in general. So first of all though I just wanted to discuss the news and then we'll get into more of the questions and hopefully I'll be able to answer everything in this episode and clear up some uncertainties. All right, so the other day on the 5th, after Musliner tweeted out a screenshot of a jailbroken iPad mini, Japone did the same exact thing except with a fourth generation iPad. So the brand new full-sized Retina A6X powered iPad. So yes, the iOS security experts and hackers have managed to successfully jailbreak the new full-size fourth generation iPad. Now in his tweet, Chapone mentioned that Cydia on the fourth generation iPad looks identical to Cydia on the third generation iPad. So of course we just have to take him for his word, but he is definitely a reputable member of the jailbreak community. So it's not really asking that much to trust him because this is most definitely a new iPad. Now before you guys get too excited, just know that this, like the iPad mini and the iPhone 5 jailbreak, images that were tweeted out relies on a fail break. Now for those of you that don't know, a fail break is essentially a jailbreak method that relies on an iOS developer account. So clearly the majority would not be able to use a jailbreak if it were actually released through this fail break method. Now also building on that, if it were to be released, it would cause legal issues between the iPhone dev team and Apple. I've actually received a number of questions asking, well, why don't they tweet out that they've jailbroken something like the iPhone 4S or something that's older that still isn't supposed supported in the tethered version of Red Snow. Well, that's actually quite simple because they only really tweet out that they've jailbroken a new iOS based device because of course they can apply the same method in the fail break to jailbreak something such as an iPhone 4S or an iPad 2 for instance. So Apple customers with one of the slightly older A5 based devices will of course be covered once a jailbreak is finally released to the public. And while this may not seem like much other than the developers just flaunting that they have Cydia on their devices and that we don't have access to it, they're actually just showing us that they're making progress on the jailbreak and that it's compatible with the newer devices that are released by Apple. So of course they are still devoting a lot of time to develop an untethered jailbreak for all of the newer devices. Now there is currently a tethered jailbreak out for the iPhone 4, the iPhone 3GS and the fourth generation iPod Touch. Now, if you're interested in that, just be sure to check out my video. I did an in-depth tutorial on it and then how to install a semi-untethered or a semi-tethered jailbreak, which essentially just means that once you have the tethered jailbreak, you can boot your device back up without using Red Snow with limited functionality. And if you want full functionality, again, just like a tethered jailbreak, you'd have to plug it into your computer and rerun a certain part of Red Snow. So essentially that's what it is. There are two major types of jailbreaks. The first being a tethered jailbreak, which just means that you have to plug it into your computer and rerun a certain part of the utility to get it to boot back up into its fully functional jailbroken state, and an untethered jailbreak, which just allows you to freely reboot the device without having to plug it into a computer every time. Now there's also a semi-tethered or a semi-untethered jailbreak, which basically just builds upon the tethered jailbreak, which again allows you to boot your device with limited functionality without using Red Snow. So it's essentially like your lifeline if your device dies and you absolutely need to reboot it and you don't have a computer around. So of course, like I said, the members of the dev teams are heavily working on the iOS 6 and 6.0.1 untethered jailbreak for all of the Apple devices that iOS 6 currently supports. So of course, just be sure to stay tuned to my channel, this series and best tech info. I will keep you guys completely updated on the jailbreak status and I'll also kind of answer your guys' questions as we go along. So if you guys have any questions related to the jailbreak, related to the untethered 
untethered jailbreak, semi-tethered, semi-untethered jailbreak, or just the untethered jailbreak in general. You can just leave them down below in the comment section and I'll try to answer them. And if I can't actually get to them by responding to your comment, then hopefully I'll be able to include your question in one of my episodes of Best Tech and Phone Rumors. All right, now moving on, let's talk about the second generation iPad mini. Yes, I did say the second generation, even though the first iPad mini device was released, reports are already starting to come in of an alleged iPad mini with a retina display that's currently in development. Now, of course, it's inevitable that Apple will eventually release a retina iPad mini as they're starting to adopt the retina technology, which first started out on the iPhone 4 across multiple products and multiple product lines. But just how soon will they release a new iPad with a retina display? Well, it might be sooner than you think. In fact, Apple could release a new iPad mini with a retina display, along with a new full-size fifth generation iPad this spring. Now, if you guys want more details on the supposed second generation iPad mini with the retina display, just be sure to check out the post that's down below in the more info. It does detail the type of technologies that Apple would have to implement into the display to actually get it to that retina quality. All right, next up in an AT&T press release from PR Newswire, it was announced that the company is extending the iOS 6 feature that enables FaceTime calls over cellular data to more customers. Now, initially, only iPhone and iPad customers who are using a shared data plan could actually take advantage of the FaceTime over cellular data feature. However, now it seems that they're planning to roll out the functionality to their customers with LTE devices on a tiered data plan. So unfortunately, it seems that they're only extending it to the minority of customers, and they're definitely not including unlimited customers because they know that they'll use too much data and put too much strain on the network. And in a separate blog post by an AT&T official, that was almost exactly what he said. They're being cautious and they're only allowing a certain number of customers to use this feature, which obviously doesn't seem right because I know a lot of people on AT&T are with AT&T because they're grandfathered into their unlimited data plans. And and of course, the argument is brought up quite frequently. Well, it's my data. I pay for the unlimited data. Why can't I do with it what I choose? Which is definitely a valid point. However, in this situation, it seems that AT&T is becoming much more restrictive recently. Of course, it first started out when they stopped offering unlimited data plans. And of course, it's continued since then with new measures such as throttling, which of course limits the download speeds that customers get once they reach a certain point of data usage on their unlimited data plans. Of Also, of course, with their shared data plans, which is clearly nothing less than an insult. It seems that AT&T is starting to lose sight of what's really important, the customer, and also making the customer happy and making them want to actually be on the network instead of feeling like they're forced to be on the network either because they're grandfathered into their unlimited data plan or their contract isn't up yet and they're not able to switch to another carrier. All right, now next up, just briefly covering an article from yesterday, Apple's cellular capable iPad mini and fourth generation iPad models will start to ship soon. You might ask, well, how soon is that? Well, certain customers have reported that Apple has updated their order status to display estimates of either November 20th or November 21st for iPad mini models. Now, of course, right now, if you were to purchase one of the new iPads, iPad mini models show a shipping estimate of about two weeks, whereas the fourth generation iPad shows that it will ship in about seven days, which of course still matches up with when customers will receive their pre-orders. So if you guys are interested in a cellular capable fourth generation iPad, you can still pick it up on Apple's website and get it around the date that it officially releases. All right, now finally, to conclude the news in this episode, I'm sure that many of you are aware that Apple has recently teamed up with the American Red Cross to accept donations from their customers to support Hurricane Sandy relief efforts. Well, on top of that, in a letter from Tim Cook, Apple CEO, it was announced that the company will be donating $2.5 million of their own in addition to everything that their customers have donated to support Hurricane Sandy relief. And you might be asking, well, what exactly will that go to? In the letter, Tim Cook details that it will not only go to help families, but it will also go to businesses to help recover and rebuild. All right, now I hope you guys liked this video. Don't forget to rate it up if you did. Hit that subscribe button to be notified every time I release new videos. All right, and for the question of the day, let me know what you guys think about AT&T and how restrictive they're starting to become. Also, don't forget, like I said earlier, if you guys have any questions pertaining to the untethered jailbreak status for the newer iOS devices, just be sure to leave your questions down below in the comment section. I'll try to answer them. And if I can't actually get to it, maybe I'll include your question in one of the upcoming episodes of Best Tech and phone rumors. All right, now before we conclude, I just wanted to say that if you guys want a chance to earn paid iOS applications from Apple's App Store for free, 
All you have to do is visit bit.ly forward slash iOS apps for free. Now, once you go to that, all you have to do is simply install the trusted certificate, and then you can actually download some already free applications, earn credits, and you can use those credits to do things such as purchasing actual gift cards like an iTunes gift card, which can be used for paid iOS applications. Now, of course, that link is on the screen, and just be sure to visit it on your mobile iOS-based device. Now, to be updated more often, just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and add me to one of your circles inside of Google+. Google Plus. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.